Imagine doing a petty crime and ending up in prison with serial killers or fists and people who have known nothing but violence their whole lives. Yeah, not all prisoners are psychotic murderers, and most of them can change their ways with the proper care and attention. But there are some prisons where that is just impossible. They basically killed my child. If they don't have the human rights or the needs to take care of those men in there, just let them go before they gotta come home. Dang. It's not right. Regular beatings, torture, and murder all run rampant here. Former inmates suffer from mental health conditions such as depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder for the rest of their lives. And sometimes, so do the correctional officers. Officers would be assaulted daily. It can range from a broken nose to a broken eye socket, broken bones, broken ribs. There's no limit to what these inmates would do to you. In today's video, we're gonna tell you all about the most dangerous prisons to ever exist. You can't talk about prisons without talking about the notorious Bang Kwang Central Prison in Bangkok, Thailand. Built between 1927 and 1931, this famous prison in Thailand has been jokingly referred to as the Bangkok Hilton. It's a pretty obvious hint at the severe lack of comfort or order in this prison. So whatever crime you commit, you're thrown inside an overpacked cell with some of the most dangerous criminals in the world, including those who have been sentenced to death. Locals also call it the Big Tiger because it eats men alive. I have no clue when I will die. They could inject me today or tomorrow. And if the Big Tiger doesn't kill you with a lethal injection, it could kill you with disease. The Bangkok Hilton is operating at a 224% capacity. Overcrowding is an understatement. Prisoners spend 15 hours a day in their tiny cells, constantly touching each other, even when they sleep on the cold concrete floor. You literally cannot lie flat on your back. Put your hands on your stomach. If you do that, your elbows are on two, two other beds. That's pretty damn close, and you go in, and that's 15 hours a day. It's easy to imagine how fast disease can spread in there. And if you get hurt, it may take hours, sometimes days, until a doctor looks at the injury, so that can get infected too. The Bang Kwang prison has been criticized for violating several human rights through inhumane conditions and practices. For instance, all inmates used to be forced to wear leg irons during the first three months of their sentence, which was obviously incredibly uncomfortable for them in every way. Even those who were sentenced to death had to wear these leg irons till they were finally executed. While the use of shackles was officially discontinued in 2013, it is believed that some of the most threatening criminals are still forced to walk around in chains. Like most prisons, the Bangkok Hilton also has a class system, and yes, that applies to basic necessities such as food as well. Those higher up receive more facilities and supplies compared to the ones who are deemed to be of lower class. There are also reports of corruption and smuggling involved as many of the richer inmates are able to get drugs, alcohol, and whatever else they may desire. And anyone who dares to go against them receives a good beating or a knife in the back. And here's a final twist. Inmates are forced into free labor and the officers torture them if they don't meet the inhumane quotas. It was 2 p.m. one day and I wasn't able to finish the nets in time, so I was forced to lie down in the sun and roll over in the dirt. In the Bangkok Hilton, there are more inmates with severe mental health issues than inmates without any. One in 10 inmates is the title. There is a lot of people who's losing their minds. Well, I'm sleeping next to a guy now. He just walked around all day, walked around talking to his cell. I'm in the room next to him at night and I've seen a dog scratch less. Last night, we were itching that much. There must have been about three different places where we were bleeding from, and he actually got blood on my bed. The Rikers Island prison is having a full-blown crisis. Conditions at Rikers Island are now being described as a humanitarian crisis. They say it's not safe for corrections officers or inmates. It wasn't access to showers. They were not wearing clean clothes. Rikers Island prison contains New York City's biggest jail. It was built in 1932 on Rikers Island on the East River in the Bronx. Its goal? To house inmates that were awaiting trial. But many of these never get bail and their trial dates are postponed. They are stuck for years in an overcrowded prison where there's only one officer to 50 inmates and daily violence, unspeakable acts of violence. Officers would be assaulted daily. It can range from a broken nose to a broken eye socket, broken bones, broken ribs. There's no limit to what these inmates would do to you. The former corrections officer describes inmates violating female officers regularly 
and the other officers doing nothing about it. I was feeding them through the feeding slot. Once you open their slot to put their tray, they would like put their penis in the slot. I screamed. The other officers on the floor was like, what happened? And I was like, he's masturbating. And they were like, oh, he does that to everyone. Like it was just normal. And when a fellow female officer was almost violated by an inmate, the prison leadership just told a female officer to wear Spanx under their uniform. For just in case, it shouldn't be a just in case. Am I gonna go to work today and is my belt gonna be ripped off? Inmates threaten guards that they will cut them if they attempt to pepper spray them. We are at a time where the inmates are running the prison. Sadly, it doesn't get any better for the inmates either. They basically killed my child. If they don't have the human rights or the needs to take care of those men in there, just let them go before they gotta come home. Dang, it's not right. A 2021 report stated that violence has gotten worse every year since 2015. During the COVID-19 pandemic, 1,500 correction officers in New York called out sick every day. They were desperate to get out of their hellhole workplaces, but in turn, they allowed the prison gangs to completely take over. New York City Mayor Eric Adams plans to close Rikers Island by 2027. The Black Dolphin Prison in Russia is a literal hellhole, and that's extra tough. Russian prisons are notoriously harsh. The Black Dolphin is harsh even in Russian terms. Located near the border of Kazakhstan, the facility hosts the country's most violent and brutal criminals, including pedophiles, terrorists, serial killers, and cannibals. Yes, you heard that right, cannibals. Approximately 700 convicts live in this prison who have killed almost 4,000 people combined. Imagine that. And the only way to leave the Black Dolphin is in a coffin. Everyone in this prison is serving a life sentence. In this cell, a man who raped 44 minors and killed five children aged seven to 11. So it's really no wonder that these prisoners are watched 24 seven via video surveillance and that guards make rounds every 15 minutes to make sure everything is okay. Two inmates share a small 50 square foot cell that is behind three sets of metal doors to keep them extra isolated. The most important thing is to avoid becoming embittered. It is so easy to turn into an animal here, but staying human, that's harder. That's why we try, both with each other and with the administration, to stay human. On the prisoner's cell door stands their name, picture, and conviction. This way, the officer's sympathy is reduced to zero, time and time again. Prisoners are only allowed outside for around 90 minutes to exercise in a barren exercise yard. When they're moved anywhere in the prison, they are blinded and bent over so that they can't learn any of the routes or get into fights with fellow inmates or guards. The administration has to be on high alert at all times to make sure that things don't get out of control because the prisoners here are capable of anything. Thanks to this inhumane treatment, many of the world's most hardened criminals learn to regret their deeds. Everything is lost. The years go by, your health worsens, everything passes by. I think there are few people left in here who think they did the right thing. The years show you that you were wrong, totally wrong. You can't do that. But after an ex-Black Dolphin inmate committed a crime on the very train taking him home after his release, the Black Dolphin isn't too keen on releasing his prisoners, ever. Following up, let's talk about the Kamiti Maximum Security Prison located in Roy Sambu constituency in Kenya. You've probably heard how tough the prisons in this country are, and this one is unanimously known as the worst. British colonists built this facility in 1954 and modeled it after an old style system to house the offenders during a state of emergency declared in 1952. Even now, the prison has its original gallows, but it hasn't seen an official execution since 1987. The prison has a reputation for being suffocatingly overcrowded as it houses up to 3,000 inmates, even though the official capacity is only 1,200. Unsurprisingly, dangerous health conditions such as AIDS, hepatitis, gonorrhea, tuberculosis, syphilis, and many more are rampant here. Every Kenyan convict tries their very best to avoid being sent here. And here's something else. The prison is located in Agriculture, Nairobi County, and it's so remote, it has no reliable water supply. Prisoners have to go fetch water early in the morning every single day. In 2008, the infamy of the prison grew even more when the prisoners started rioting after a contraband search. In 2021, the prison was once again in the news after three super dangerous convicted terrorists managed to escape the facility. In the aftermath of the incident, 
no less than seven wardens were arrested for aiding their escape. But here's a positive twist. For years, Committee Maximum Security Prison was known as a site of daily prison fights and even killings. But after a 2002 change of government, Kenyan prisons have seen great improvement. Prisons now work with wood, metal, and textiles, creating beautiful products that can be sold outside the prison. This way, they feel more included in society and better prepared to leave the prison. They leave better people than they came in. It also restores their dignity. Next up on the list, we have the terrifying La Sante prison in Paris, France. First opened in 1867, this is easily one of the most notorious places in the entire world. Many famous names have stayed here, including novelist Jean Genette, Carlos the Jackal Bernard Tapiem, and the infamous gangster Jacques Mazrin. Back when it was built, it was hailed as the most beautiful prison in Europe. But today, La Sante is known for its inhumanely harsh and unhealthy conditions, which terrify even the most cold-hearted criminals. And what's particularly ironic here is that Sante means health in French. The prison is severely overcrowded. The inmates are filthy whether they like it or not because they're only allowed two showers a week. The toilets are exposed and the rooms are rarely cleaned. La Sante also houses multiple mentally ill prisoners who are left alone to harm themselves as well as other inmates. Oh, and it also houses rats, several rats. Prisoners reportedly stuff their clothes into cracks in the walls just to keep the rats from chewing them off. The prison has been the site of multiple brawls, riots, executions, and even escapes. Living conditions have been reported to be so awful that many of the prisoners attempt to take their own lives. In 1999, 124 inmates took their own lives. And a truly disturbing year 2000 report showed prison guards were oftentimes violating inmates. To think La Sante prison shares a wall with a nursery. Here's another hellish prison, Terre Oaks Federal Prison in Indiana, United States. This complex consists of three units, maximum security, medium security, and low security units. It's been called Guantanamo North by many and is currently home to the infamous Boston bomber, Shohad Zanayev. In 2001, Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh was also executed inside Terre Haute. Terre Haute is home to some of United States' most dangerous criminals. Basically about any really bad thing you can imagine, they send guys here for that. Terrorists, murderers, you name it, they're here. So the prison's death row is always busy, but today, it's accused of having grossly inadequate conditions, violating the most basic human rights. The inmates are denied basic healthcare services, and at night they're subjected to so much noise that many of them are suffering from sleep deprivation and consequently, severe mental health issues. The terrible reputation of the facility still stands, and in January 2021, it was reported that Terre Haute had the highest number of COVID-19 cases in the entire federal prison system. Many have called for this facility to be reformed completely, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon. Since July 2021, the United States Department of Justice is reviewing its capital punishment policy. Thus, federal executions have been on pause. Just three months before the end of President Donald Trump's term, his administration carried out 13 federal executions, including that of Lisa Montgomery. She was the first woman to be executed by the government in over 65 years. As of right now, 46 men are on death row at this facility. Dylan Roof, who famously killed nine church parishioners in Charleston, South Carolina, is also present here. Under President Biden's government, it's unlikely they will be executed. But Terre Haute remains home to some of the most hardened criminals out there, so violence is the norm inside the prison. In September 2021, two inmates were murdered within two weeks inside the prison. One of them was in his first week there, but most of the horrendous violence inside the prison's walls goes unreported. Let's head over to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. This is perhaps the most controversial prison on earth, mainly because almost all of the detainees were held without charge or trial. Yeah, that's right. They weren't even given a chance to defend themselves in court. This is the prison the United States government built in Cuba for Muslim inmates following the 9-11 attack. The United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. Since 2002, 779 Muslim men and minors 
have been detained here. They have all been subjected to inhumane torture by prison guards. In a clear breach of human rights, most prisoners were held indefinitely without trial. So because there is no trial for the prisoners, their sentence is indefinite. They have no idea when or if they're going to be able to leave this hellhole. They used to strip us all naked right in the beginning, you know, they sliced all our clothes off and spit us and punched us and, you know, degraded us in ways it's really hard to, even now, hard to describe. And that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to remove our sense of individualism and give us each a number. Many of them have protested against these conditions, while others have attempted to take their own lives in order to stop the psychological and physical torture that they go through on a daily basis. A lot of them tried to commit suicide. There was a few guys in front of us who tried to commit suicide. It's not the best sight to see. I mean, and I was only 18 then, and it's the first time I see someone show the kids off. Some of them went on hunger strikes, but were forced to eat by the prison guards through nasal or rectal feeding. And when an inmate had a panic attack, the prison guards sent a psychiatrist to his cell. She encouraged him to take his own life. You may be wondering why this facility was set up in Cuba. Well, that's because the U.S. naval base here was large and secure enough to hold the prison. But most importantly, this decision was made because it's foreign soil and therefore beyond the reach of any United States court. So it's less likely for the torture and wrongful imprisonments to be punished. In the beginning, the Bush administration claimed that only the most hardened terrorists and their enablers would be sent here. But later, many held at the camp were determined to have little or no connection to the Taliban or Al Qaeda. Some of them were just guilty of being Muslim. My name is Mazen Beg. I'm from the city of Birmingham. I was held by the Americans in Guantanamo Bay between 2002 and 2005 without charge or trial. Although most of the inmates have now been transferred to other countries, a few dozen remain and they're still subjected to the worst possible kind of psychological and physical torture. An ex-inmate was held in Guantanamo Bay prison without charge for 14 years and has severe PTSD to this day. Three, four nights ago, I woke up and I was shaking so scared because I saw my jacket on the door and I thought it was someone coming to get me. And it took me a very long time. Sometimes I wake up, I cannot breathe. Today, there are 39 prisoners in Guantanamo Bay prison and there are plans to close the prison forever. North Korea is notorious for its extreme oppressive regime. Most people live inches close to famine. And if you say anything against those in charge, you can get executed on the spot or thrown into some of the most awful prisons on earth. One of these is Camp 22. According to Insider, Camp 22 is all too similar to the Nazi concentration camp, but North Korea, much like all communist countries, is highly secretive about its atrocities. The only reports come from the very few escapes and ex-prison guards who couldn't take the sight of daily torture anymore. 200,000 citizens have disappeared in North Korea. Many of these are thought to be sent to Camp 22. According to a former prisoner, most inmates were either dead or disabled during their first three months at the camp. This is because they're tortured by the guards and subjected to unspeakable human experiences. It's quite literally a house of horrors. And here's where it gets even more brutal. Some are sent to Camp 22 and other prison camps as kids. Some are even born there. When a prisoner named Shin managed to escape and found political asylum in South Korea, he was surprised to find out there were other countries or a world outside prison camps. He'd grown up believing everything was prison camps and labor for Kim Jong-il. I didn't know, not at all, not until I escaped. I had no real feelings when I was a kid. Shin was born in prison, the child of two prisoners, the guards forced to marry. He and the other children were beaten, sometimes beaten to death and stopped repeatedly. When they would be sent to the mountains for hard labor, they were happy they could catch mice and worms to eat. Shin was the only one who escaped Camp 14. After years of unspeakable torture, sadly, North Korea camps are just the mirror of a very terrible regime where people are held in darkness, both literally and metaphorically, starved and punished with death if they speak against the government. He cuts his own population off from all information, but he himself has got television from all over the world. Moving on, let's talk about the Arbaker prison in Turkey. This facility was built in 1980 by the Ministry of Justice. After the Turkish coup d'etat, this location became a martial law military prison where torture was used almost every day on the Kurdish people, almost all punished for the alleged crimes of a few. Almost 650,000 people were detained here, and most were 
beaten, tortured, or straight up killed. Reportedly, more than 500 died during this period. Many of the former inmates who were present in Diyarbakir during the 1980s have shared horrifying stories. They were reportedly subjected to systematic torture, mental abuse, as well as sleep and food deprivation, mock executions, extractions of healthy teeth and nails, electric shocks to genitals, hangings, and worse, were all rampant here. This unacceptable violation of human rights against Kurdish prisoners is what fueled the rise of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which still protests against the state of Turkey. In 2021, it was announced that the Diyarbakir facility would turn into a cultural center, a decision that was wildly controversial. Will it become a place of healing after years of inhumane stories, or will it lead to a classic case of whitewashing history? Urban planner Dylan Kaya said, there's a big difference between a cultural center and a museum. I don't know if the new idea really suggests that we are going to create something which shows what we have learned from history. Erasing those memories would be wrong. Let's travel halfway across the world to Mendoza prison in Argentina. A place so horrible that many of the people in prison have gone so far as to sew their mouths shut in demand of better living conditions. It is severely overcrowded, and an average of 50 inmates are crowded into tiny cells that measure only about 43 square feet. Many of them are also forced to sleep on the floor without any mattresses, pillows, or blankets. Apart from that, there are barely any toilets, and the few that are present are unbelievably dirty and unhygienic. As a result, they have resorted to using plastic bags and bottles as their washrooms due to the lack of a proper sewage system. Many of the prisoners suffer from viral conditions as well as musculoskeletal disorders. And of course, there is little to no professional help available. Reportedly, medical staff is only called once one of the inmates has passed away. The guards make sure they always have full control over the inmates, and they'll often use torture to exert their dominance. If someone crosses over them, they won't hesitate to execute them and even blame it on one of the other inmates. There's zero justice inside the Mendoza prison. In case of a prison riot, the administration simply imposes a lockdown that may last from weeks to months. Even the guards refuse to enter some of the more dangerous pavilions, instead leaving meals of inmates at an agreed spot some distance from the interior. The Mendoza prison, much like any prisons in South America, is a symbol of the failed war on a war that is causing millions of deaths and endless pain and suffering. El sistema penitenciario en Latinoamérica es conocido por su mal estado, confinamiento, violación a los derechos humanos, corrupción. Let's finish this list with a prison that's terrifying in just about every way possible. The Gitarama prison is considered the world's most inhumane prison. Remember the overcrowded cells of Bangkwang prison? Well, the Gitarama prison was built to house 600 inmates today. It houses from 6,000 to 8,000. Imagine what happens when you put violent individuals together in a small place where they have to breathe down each other's necks. That's right, Gitarama is one of the deadliest prisons in the world, and the inmates who are alive go through unspeakable torture every single day. For starters, the prison is so overcrowded that they rarely have room to sit down or lie down. This means no sleep, no clean air, and easy access to contracting every disease around. Most of the time, there is no food either. So there have been several reports of cannibalism within the prison. This is not even psychopathic murder. It's a fight to survive. Eight Gitarama inmates die every day, and the smell can be filled from a mile away. It's, it's almost impossible to convey what it's like down here. The camera doesn't show smell. The camera doesn't show heat. There are, I don't know, maybe 500 people in this little tiny room. Over there are lavatories, perhaps two of them. And I'm told there's two more upstairs. That's about 8,000 people. Uh, there's coughing, there's, there's sickness, there's people with their feet festering. The question remains, why does such a place even exist? The Gitarama prison became severely overcrowded after the 1994 Rwanda genocide. 
More than half a million Tutsi people were butchered by the Hulu-led government. But almost three decades have passed since then, and the Gitarama prison in Rwanda remains a place filled with torture, death, disease, and capitalism, even as the United Nations and other human rights organizations fight for its closure. Hey, thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button for more videos. You wouldn't want to miss a new one. See you all in the next one, and take care.